What's up everybody, this is Jack from Crypto49er, bringing you my knowledge in cryptocurrency. Today I want to talk about Gecko Trading Bot and the Awesome Oscillator. So the Awesome Oscillator, I'm going to show you right now. So this is a regular chart from TradingView. It's similar to the MACD in that the MACD has two trend lines. It uses the 12 and the 26 EMAs and it's going to um, draw them on this chart right here. In addition, it uses the difference of these two trend lines to calculate the histogram. And essentially, the AO, the awesome oscillator, as I'll just refer to it as AO from now on, as you can see, you can pull it up from a trading view using just AO, and you see that it's basically just a histogram. So the histogram here shows you when it's trending upwards, it's green, and when it's trending downwards, it's red, and it has a zero line right here, so basically, there's several different strategies that people use with the awesome oscillator. And I'm going to show you them right now. So a very basic one is just a zero line cross. The zero line cross is when AO goes from negative, like here, to positive in the next bar. That is the zero line cross. And that is a sign that uh, people would use as a buy signal. So I'm going to show you the AO strategy I created. So there's actually, I, I created a strategy called AO Saucer Dash Twin Peaks. It hints at other strategies that you can use besides the zero line cross. But before I do, I just want to go over the fact that um, this strategy needs the AO indicator. And the AO indicator is actually not included in Gecko. So you can either use um, Tulip, the, the Tulip libraries, and to get the AO indicator, or you can just download it from uh, Gab Zero's uh, Gecko Extra Indicators. So uh, AO is right here. Actually, this is the test for AO, but AO is inside the Indicators folder. Uh, as myself, when I first started Gecko, and I've seen a lot of people have done it in the past, when people try to download the Gab Zero Indicators, Extra Indicators, they just simply drop this whole entire folder. They unzip it right into the Indicators folder inside Gecko, and that's wrong. So you're supposed to extract this all, all the stuff inside the strategies folder, all these things outside is actually the tests of the indicators that he provide. So these tests are simply a comparison. I'm going to open up the test-ao to show you guys. So the, this is just a comparison between the Tulip indicator and the native version. Basically, the native version is what he wrote. He converted the Tulip version to process the same way um, in Gecko, except that being tulip indicators, they're actually written in C++, I believe. It's actually slower, just the way that Gecko has to process it separately. So point being, it's slower to use tulip indicators, and that's why I'm pointing out that you should definitely use um, AO as a native indicator by downloading it from Gap0. After you download the indicator, you can go ahead and play with the strategy that I have created right here. So very straightforward, it just uses basic, the basic setup um, for AO. AO is um, the basic setup, but it's really just, I believe you go to the indicator, you can see that it's a, it uses a short SMA of five bars, five candles, five bars, or the, and the long of 34. And um, the only difference is it doesn't use the close price, it uses the medium price. So the medium price is, um, is what's being used to calculate the both short and as long SMA. Inside the strategy in here, you can see that I actually gather up the last 30 candles of the AO indicator. I just want to um, be able to compare up to, look basically look back, as far back as 30 candles uh, for the AO indicator. And I'll explain why in a bit. But for the most part, if you just need it for the zero line cross, like here, this is the in the check function, the guts and the, or the heart of the strategy, right? If you just use a zero line upward cross, you only really need like a, the minimum is two bars, right? The current ca uh, candle and the previous candle. But I just use one more just to, you know, for sake of things. So this is, um, it looks back at the, it looks at the current candle, which is 29. Remember on the array it is from zero to 29. So if you have 30, if you have an array that can hold 30 values, 29 is the last one. So 29 is basically the current candle. And the current candle has to be greater than zero, right? I mean, the current indicator for AO has to be greater than zero. And then the previous has to be less than zero. And let's look back one more, um, basically, 
the pre the one before that, and I'm, in this case, I said it also has to be less than zero. So following this strategy here, and actually, I'm also also saying a sell strategy right here, as you see, sell of three red histogram blocks all above zero. So there's a couple of ways you can determine a sell in using the AO. So one way to do it is simply letting it fall back down below um, the zero line, like in here. So that's definitely one way to do it. And that actually might be more valuable in some sense, like this one right here. So you imagine buying here and then you sell right here. It doesn't really make sense, I understand. But if you buy here and you sell over here, when it actually fall down back below the zero line, you make a pretty good profit. But based on what I have played around with, actually in this backtesting wise, this is like, you most of the time you will end up losing more money. So this is actually a pretty good example right over here. So it's something like this, where you actually see it go above the zero line right here. And then by the time you sell, because it went below the zero line, you're actually suffering a pretty good, pretty significant loss. So that's why the strategy I have written will just look for uh, three consecutive red histogram bars. Based on this particular set of strategies, so buy when it is above, when it forms the uh, when it forms zero line cross, upward cross, and sell when there's three red histogram bars that are all above zero. The result is during a bear market of last year, it performed better than the bear uh, performed better than the market, but not by much. So this strategy, this very basic one anyway, doesn't work that well. So let's look at some of the other ones that's pointed out, like in the article right here in CoinDesk, and many actually, I've, I found several other uh, places that talk about the, uh, different strategies to use with AO. And in this article here, they talk specifically about using something called a saucer and the Twin Peaks. The saucer, if you could, I'm gonna zoom in as much as possible in here, you can see barely that you see that um, and there's two red bars and one green bar. Then they're all above the zero line. So the idea of the saucer is that this is going to be a red candle. So it's basically it's kind of trending downwards in, in terms of um, the AO indicator. It's trending downwards until it shoots up back to green in this particular candle. And since all three, all three of them are above the zero line, this is a buy signal. So to calculate this, all you have to do is, again, use the array to look through the three candles, including the current one, right? So 27 is the two candles previous. So this one has to be greater than 28, but meaning that it's falling. So basically it's been falling and um, the current candle, 29, has to be greater than 28, meaning that it's actually, again, at the current candle, it's actually uh, peaking out again. So it's basically it's trending upwards, so forming that little U-shape. So all of these are valid, and all of these have to be above zero. So that's when you would issue a long advice. So following this particular strategy, it's actually even more <laughs> negative. It actually lost more money. So the bullish sauce by itself, hmm, probably doesn't work very well. As you can see, some of these bigger losses in here, like 10%. I mean, it doesn't happen too often, but it's just there's not enough gains in here to offset that loss. And, the, and there are many, many losses, as you can see. So this is probably one strategy that you might need to combine with something else to make it actually more accurate. So there is a third strategy, as I mentioned here, the Twin Peaks. The Twin Peaks is actually kind of hard to calculate. So essentially what you want to do is, we're first going to look for a bullish saucer that forms below the zero line, because essentially we're looking to do something like this, where you see that there's two peaks, right? But this peak is lower than this peak, at least in terms of uh, when you flip it upside down, right? When you flip these negative values upside down, this is actually a lower peak than this one. So we want a lower peak here than this peak. And then what we're going to do first is we need to look for a, a lower peak here. So essentially, we're just looking for a saucer right here, essentially. So we're looking for a saucer right here. And if this saucer forms, then we're just going to look back up and up to the last up to 30 candles because that's basically what I've seen as um, approximately up to 30 candles in terms of how much uh, spacing you can actually have between these two peaks. So if there is a bullish saw, that's more like a, if there is a um, 
bullish saucer form below the zero line. That is a that's when we first start checking. Then after that, we need to check to make sure that check if the array is above zero line, break if it is. So we want to make sure that none of these candles between the peaks actually break the zero line. If it breaks the zero line, it invalidates this Twin Peaks um, setup. So if it breaks it, we're just gonna leave that particular if loop for the Twin Peaks. And we're just gonna go and look for it on the next time we see a Twin Peaks. So that's how it works. So if it doesn't, if it doesn't do that, then we're gonna actually go through and look for another Twin Peak in here using multiple values J, K, and L to actually look through each of the three bars that we're looking to uh, see if it forms another um, bullish saucer. If it forms that, then we know that there was a previous peak. And in this case, we'll then issue a buy signal. So following this strategy here, let's see how it does. So Twin Peak strategy actually is not that bad. It's um it basically it performed much better than the market last year. And the market last year lost 53% for Bitcoin and it only lost 17%. Made a limited number of trades, not as crazy as like the bullish saucer or even the zero line upward cross. It only made 59 trades, but it was more conservative and more conservative and it was able to uh, make some decent profits, but even though overall it was a loss. So something to investigate a little further into, I guess. So, but if I can try to combine all three of them, the results are pretty horrible. Zero line, bullish, saucer, and twin peaks together equals to a negative 79%. So combining all these together doesn't work, but it's really more like you need to have a supporting signal, I would say, maybe like specifically for the bullish saucer or maybe even the zero line cross. You want to see when we can actually uh, check to, when you want to get like a more like a confirmation signal from something else, maybe like a RSI or maybe a MACDs or something like that. Overall, I have to say the awesome oscillator doesn't quite live up to its namesake of being very awesome, but it's something that I did want to check out and play around with. That's basically my video for today. But one thing I do want to point out is that there's one other strategy with the Awesome Oscillator that didn't have time to play with and also it's going to take some time for me to even figure out. So I found this thing on this order and on Trading Sim here. The bonus strategy that according to Trading Sim is not available anywhere else is to use the um, AO trend line as he called it, AO trend line cross. So he's looking for, again, same thing as the Twin Peaks, but instead of just using Twin Peaks, he's actually going to draw a trend line that cuts across, cuts down, and hits both, uh, these two Twin Peak points, and it cuts all the way through. So it's going to draw a trend line all the way through to like sometime in the future where it actually is negative. And you want to see the AO actually break through this trend line. And that's when you buy the break. That's essentially the strategy. So I think one thing that this does is, is um as I was reading from this article, is that it actually um, reduces um, the false positives you get from uh, the zero line cross. Because zero line cross gets a lot of false positive. Something like this right here, they didn't show you in this chart. So it's like, um, it probably was a zero line cross here and it just was completely uh, a waste of setup because it went through and then just went right back down. So with something like this, it will prevent buying into the, um, those false positives, those false signals. But this is something that's quite a hard, quite a bit of a challenge. So I would probably try to do this sometime in the future if I'm able to figure it out. But something that you guys can definitely um, play around with if you can think of a way to write a strategy to draw that trend line. So anyway, before I get going, just want to remind you guys, I am on Patreon, patreon.com slash crypto49er. And I truly appreciate um, my patrons for donating. Um, $2 per month will get you guys um, access to my monthly article. But I do have other people that donate more than that. Uh, so anyway, David Zalp um, was my most recent one. Most recent patron. Thank you very much, David. And thank you very, very much to Chris. Chris Bearden who um, donated $20. So I truly, truly appreciate that. But I also appreciate everyone else that donated. Like Ulrich, Poseidon, 70 BTC, Rano Diego, Alex. Steven Selton. So everyone here, thank you very much. So that's my video for today, guys. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below. Like and subscribe. If it isn't crypto, it isn't worth mining, it isn't worth speculating. Peace out.